Hello friends, on popular request, I'm going to cover the topic of primitive reflexes today to understand how if they are not integrated, the child's functioning can get affected. So we need to understand what are these primitive reflexes. Primitive reflexes are involuntary movement patterns means they occur reflexively in a child originating from a brain structure called as brainstem and they eventually get integrated into voluntary movements movements that the child initiates voluntarily but if they do not get integrated on time or do not get replaced by these voluntary movements there can be neurodevelopmental difficulties let us start with the first one Palmer reflex. So if you try to place your index finger in the palm of the infant and try to stroke it, the fingers will curl around yours, not the thumb, but it creates a special bond between the parent and the child. This reflex usually goes away by six months, but starts to integrate by four months. When the child starts to reach out for rattles, your glasses, your hair, and what if this reflex does not integrate by that time? The child will have difficulty in any kind of fine motor task. Dexterity required for handwriting, buttoning, zipping, tying laces, even activities like brushing, using spoon, fork, and any kind of fine motor tasks are going to make them tired. The activities that can help in integrating Palmer reflex are a squeezing ball game. The ball can be squeezed like a mass grasp or use of individual finger. To make this activity fun, paints can be used to make marks on the ball. The same purpose can be solved by a puppet toy where each finger can be used for popping. Also, Handling of fine objects really helps. So if your child is trying to make a tower of blocks, it is beneficial. Or if they try to use these small blocks to put some fine beads in it, dropping beads or holding them in one hand and then trying to drop them. It is an excellent dexterity activity. Another interesting game could be stringing of beads, where you can use the beads and the thread and it's an excellent bilateral coordination activity as well. The second reflex we will talk about now is the plantar reflex or the Babinski reflex. We are talking about the feet now. If this is the sole of your infant, if you try to stroke the outer border of the sole, the big toe will tend to extend and the rest of the toes will fan out. It's like you're stepping on something harmful and you want to avoid it it helps the child in crawling and standing. That's why it remains till one or two years of age even and gets replaced later by a flexion response where the toes and the big toe curl or flex as a response to that. So what if this reflex does not get integrated? You can find your child might have balance difficulties lower limb coordination difficulties. They might represent toe walking, an awkward kind of walking posture. And another thing that might happen is gravitational insecurity, which means that your child might not be comfortable even with regular movements, simply getting off the bed or walking up and down the stairs. Please click the card to understand how gravitational insecurity can be overcome. What to do to integrate the Babinski reflex? First, picking small objects with toes really helps because it introduces the flexion response. Secondly, practice coordination and balance activities with your child in the form of balance sports or you can ask the child to first walk on a wide base and then slowly bring it down to a narrow support base. You will find out of this in the gravitational insecurity video as well. Also, providing different textures to the feet like soft and hard so that the sensory experience increases below the toes, making them walk on grass, sand, different kind of surfaces really helps. The third one is going to be rooting reflex, which has its roots in feeding. 
It's a response of the infant towards the mother's breast or the bottle. If the corner of the mouth is stimulated with the skin or the nipple, the head turns towards that side. This reflex gets integrated by three to four months of age. By what time it becomes more voluntary, the head turning. And it may not have developed in preterm infants, say at 28 weeks of gestation if they are born. So what can go wrong? If rooting reflex does not integrate, the child might be a fussy eater, a picky eater. There could be problems like drooling, or the child might be biting their nails, thuck, sucking their thumb, chewing onto their clothes, or different inedible objects. Also, there could be a hypersensitivity around the mouth, a tendency for a tongue thrust. As your child can develop swallowing-related or speech or articulation-related difficulties later, you can work on the integration of the rooting reflex by practicing with teethers because they help in reducing the sensitivity, tolerance of textures, and also facilitate biting and chewing. In a similar manner, you can try to use straw because it helps in reducing the hypersensitivity as well as you can practice both blowing and sucking with it. So drinking with a straw and blowing in different environments or blowing bits of paper. In a similar manner, blowing bubbles can be practiced. You can click the card for checking different oral motor sensory games that can help in the integration of this reflex. Another thing that can help here is called as a nook brush. Nook brush is helps to reduce the hypersensitivity around the mouth. So you can start with the ear and move towards the angles of the mouth on each side. And the fourth reflex for the day is morose reflex or startle reflex. As the name suggests, you startle if there is a loud noise, a feeling that you're about to fall down, or there is a sudden movement. The child will cry, so extend or stretch themselves and then curl up. This stimulates the sympathetic nervous system to activate the fight and flight response later. This gets integrated by two to four months, but what if it does not? All these stimulations can lead to hypersensitivity in a child. They, will, they might be impulsive in their actions and they will have social emotional immaturity. Sensory overload leading to meltdowns will become very common and the child might have problems like motion sickness, gravitational insecurity, sensitivity to sounds. In order to integrate the moros reflex, it will be important if you try to give your child tummy time starting as early as two months of age, which helps in development of head and neck control, propping up on the forearms. It really benefits. Don't be scared to place your infant so young. Also, try to engage them in different forms of sensory play. For example, light-based, sound-based in the form of toys, touch, pressure, movement, textures, and tastes and smells try to involve all the senses for the child so that the sensory deprivation does not happen. And finally, you can try to use this starfish exercise for your child. We have more reflexes yet to cover, which we'll be covering next week, part two of primitive reflexes and how they can be integrated in children. Please tune in to watch that video next week and like the video if you found it informative. Subscribe to the channel for more topics related to child development. Ring the bell icon for notifications whenever my videos are out and we'll meet again soon. Bye.